Oh wow, there's actually... Well, I mean, the remains of people here. This seems to be have some... Oh! Goblin Slayer. Yeah, all right, everybody, we are here today checking out a guild management roguelike banger by the name of Sanctuary Saga. Now, Sanctuary Saga is a game with a simple pixel art look, but underneath that it houses a very intriguing combat system similar to a Darkest Dungeon, I would say. You see, your position in combat dictates what skills you can utilize and cannot. Another unique mechanic in Sanctuary Saga is an argument system that will rise and cause chaos to your plans if you don't keep it in check. This is done through skills and relationship building among your guildmates as you explore four different biomes in the Untamed Wilds. Manage those relationships incorrectly, and you'll soon find your guildmates leaving your employment and leaving you in a tough situation. That said, if you enjoy what you see here today, check out the provided link down below in the description to pick up Sanctuary Saga with a limited launch day discount for both the base edition and the deluxe edition, which includes a soundtrack and unique skins for your characters. Let's go. All right, everybody, that's said and done. Let's get to it here with our little adventure. Now, we're going to be starting off where technically the game calls the tutorial. I would normally skip this as I'm already familiar with the game, and I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown. We'll skip a lot of this, but the reason why I don't skip it entirely is jump into the game is because what happens in the tutorial, I feel actually links to where the game starts if we do decide to skip it. And what happens here at the end will be very important for future story events. So, let's get to it here. Uh, we got Ponch. Well, if they loaded it in the right order, we wouldn't have this problem. That's irrelevant now. We need to solve the current situation. Just have them reverse the stacks once it's all on the beach. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Let me go help them. Hold, Ponch. We have bigger business. You two, go help the lumpers unload. Y yes, sir! So, where we are dictates what skills we can use. So, for instance, right now, Thrust and Faint available because we can use that in row 1 and 2, which we happen to be in, I think, 2 right now. Now, skills here, we'll use Slash on... I might as well finish off the one that's coming up next. Now, one thing you notice is that skills don't have any MP limitations, which I love. I don't want to worry about that stuff. I just want to use my skills to my heart's content. But there's also regular attack. This normally is if you can't use a skill, you can use attack. That's going to always cause your unit to move one row forward as well. So keep that in mind. Sometimes you can use an attack to get yourself in better positioning for a skill you might want to use. Wow! Along the way, we will find treasure chests. Now, so far that I've run into, most of the chests seem to consist of goods. Which is very important because our upgrades, everything we purchase, will indeed be done with goods because we're essentially in the untamed wilds. There's no technical monetary system out here. And here we have found our clearing. Now keep in mind this is like the first expansion team coming out here to said wilds. We have a wife here and we have a little baby. Nothing can possibly go wrong. What's going to be interesting about your quote-unquote guild center is that there's going to be a bunch of different areas of production. For instance, we have the blacksmith here who will take certain care of your classes. This is where you bring, say you want to upgrade a sword or something. You bring the goods here, you could upgrade them through the blacksmith. Then we'll have like a chemist. Then we'll have like, say, uh, a nun or something for anybody that deals with sort of holy weaponry, crucifixes, etc, etc. So everybody has their own little focus in the map itself. This is a quest that we can indeed pick up. Greetings, young commander. Long story short, this guy wants us to collect some rare flowers for him. Great. Oh, blacksmith. Could we, by chance, get a better weapon? Yes. We could get the broadsword for punch. So, and the plate mail too. So we'll pick both of these up. Now, once we have those, equip. You cannot equip on the field. Everything is done through here, through your guild center. So whenever you buy something, make sure that you come over here and either optimize or equip manually, depending on what you want to actually get on the characters. And you saw that? Ponch has grown to level 2. You don't get experience here per fight, you get it per upgrade of equipment. So upgrades more important than just basically quote-unquote farming fights, but although you get rewards for fighting enemies in the field such as goods for upgrading equipment, so in a way kind of substitute experience for goods, but it still kind of essentially leads to the same old goal here. Now we're about to wrap up this tutorial here very, very soon. As a matter of fact, we're going to go ahead and just beeline right to it. But we have a couple of fights along the way here, so 
Let me deal with these and then we'll get to it. And here we go. Oh, there's no way this thing will let us pass. We have to incapacitate it. Punch engage. Oh, you're a big one, aren't you? Come try me on for size. Military might, gutter strikes. Punch! No, 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 Punch. You can't die here. <laughs> we were just given the same command. You can't leave me here. Surgical strikes will solve this problem. Not quite. This monster just, you know, gave him the old backhand right there. Hold, you can't have them. They're under my command. No, how can this be? How were we so unprepared for this? You oaf. You were starting fresh, remember? No expectation from others. I don't want to be here without you. Salu, no. Run back to the caravan, warn them. They'll have no warning. So what happens in the Untamed Wilds if you are unprepared? But... This is why I didn't want to skip the tutorial. Wife and baby did survive. Allegedly. Somewhere out into the Untamed Wilds though, so who knows. Then we have a 10 year skip forward. And this is technically where, if you skip a tutorial, this is where the game starts. So that's the reason why I wanted to keep that in there because of that little story note, which I'm sure will be important down the line. How soon until they send us out, you think? We've been out on travel for a better part of a year. Well, I brought it up with the Expedition Council before we left. They're aware we are feeling overworked, so that should buy us some form of respite. The sooner you relay the orders, the sooner we get to rest ourselves. Yes, ma'am. However... Ah, Serena Aris. Home ahead of schedule, excellent. I've ordered some elder kin to send you immediately to the Free Kingdom's port of Enris. A shipment there are expecting is, are expecting is ready. If your cure hurries, you can head out before dusk today. So, we just came back apparently from this big expedition. Tired. Overworked. Immediately... Oh, you're back? Get back to it. And there is our answer. Aris. I think that is beyond the last straw, don't you? You know, I think you've been more than patient up to this point with their greed. Should I inform everyone to make haste? Yes. Send Killian to the missionaries and inform them we agree to the pact. Our clan will join Dolgrim's expedition. Crazy or not, he and his dwarven clan are just this side of insane, but they'll keep their word. First light then? First light. And so, we also set sail to the Untamed Wilds. And once we are at a Founder's Landing, we'll meet up with Ethan's crew. I've hesitated to accept the help from the Thieves' Guild, but they have access to supply chains we will need. Plus, they're not too shabby in a fight. Eh, darn skippy we aren't. There's enough smell of loot for everyone to show up. You just wait and see. Even with them, do you really think we can survive? Founder's Landing is a ruin for a reason. The Untamed Wilds in a play with the fools. I assure you we're not taking the wilds lightly. Harpy's incoming! We <laughs> haven't even set foot and we're gonna get attacked. But we have two of our new characters. Now here we'll pay more attention to our fights because these will be characters that we play with for the rest of this video. Ah, uh, right now let's do quick fire. I love this one. It gives you sometimes two very good strong attacks. Or multiple enemies, which is always a good way to end these fights quickly. With our boy here, I love Powder Bag. Essentially, it causes accuracy and agility debuffs. And it hits just about from anywhere, except row 4. Uh, should we take out one you're saying? I think we might be able to take this one out in one go, as a matter of fact. Yes! We might have lucked out over the crypt, but that's fine. And... No sweat at this point. We might be able to do a quick fire. Sometimes quick fire misses one. That's the only downside, but overall, usually a pretty good skill. And just do a throw weapon. Okay, and here we are at the entrance of the forest. 
No troubles in the caverns we couldn't handle as expected. Kept having to pull Silas here away from trouble we didn't need, ha! Huh. You couldn't help it. Never been in the caves before. All losses were around our expectations. We're currently taking stock of supplies. Need to make sure people can eat. The missionaries are going around and ensuring the kids are sorted and injuries are tended. In a few days, the caravan should be ready to make a push until we find a large enough clearing for us to hunt and restock supplies. Eh, I wouldn't miss the chance to gather up some rare supplies to boot. Can't imagine there isn't a fortune waiting for to be found. As long as there is a buyer. We need to scout a pad. I'll lead a group in, in and see if we can find a wide enough course once we're past the cops. With luck, we'll find it in time and it takes to prepare the caravan. Here, I think this dictates the difficulty of the game going forward. Bright will make it so the fights aren't as difficult and you can enjoy the story. Whereas Dim gives you more of a challenge. Now, I played it in Dim off camera. And as I've mentioned, I got to the point where my first boss fight, I had to, you know, organize a couple of strategies to beat him because I got wrecked twice before I actually beat it. So we'll go with Dim just to give you the really true experience here. Now, as I've mentioned, this is going to be a situation where relationship points up with certain people and down with others. Now, this affects a lot more of them, so I will indeed go treat Grassland for this. And this is completely random. Off camera, when I went through my dungeon, it was um, some underground cavern, like a tomb area, and I had to fight some sort of wraith at the end. Here we have a tree to wasteland, so completely different from what I experienced. So that's where the roguelite mechanic comes into play. Okay, I should probably organize um, where these guys will be situated. And I also need to remove Genevieve from my party, but for now, let's just uh, handle it this way. Both of the arrows went to one, so it knocked them out. That's great. Powder bag. Let's toss that through there. Oop. Now, if we were playing more than likely in bright, we'd be getting a bunch of one-hit kills, but. And dim, it does make the enemies a lot stronger. Um, let's see, you have front row. I should hit both of these two dudes right there. Ooh, not enough to knock one of them out, but you should be able to do it for us with a little bit of small magic damage. Okay. So two down. Now mind you, you don't get to heal outside of combat. If you need healing done, it's going to be like Darkest Dungeon where you should heal in combat before you maybe end the fight so you could go into the next fight properly healed. So again, more of that dun Darkest Dungeon mindset, I would say. Let's go ahead and knock you out. Thank you. Now you have a heal, don't you? Herbs, yes. Put those on to Genevieve. I'm hoping that our dwarf and Genevieve alone should be able to take care of uh, you. Maybe not. Could Gibberish do it? I'm not sure if it's going to be strong enough. No, she's not really too much of a attack unit. But luckily he tanked most of that, so you know what? It gives me a chance to once more do one more herbs, and we might as well put in our tank. Perfect. And that should be it for us. What a crit. Got some goods for that. Before we run off, we need to do a formation. Remove Genevieve. And we're looking to add... I'm gonna go with Marie, I believe. That's gonna be kind of like our healer going forward. Now. Here, we're not really sure where to go. There's gonna be a lot of puzzles along the way, too. Very intriguing ones, as you'll soon see. Is that a goblin? Oh, we gotta deal with the old goblins. Falcon loves his goblins. Nothing through here. That looks like a scary fella right there. Well, I'd rather go with the goblin here first, so... Oh, these aren't goblins, they're orcs. That makes even more sense, I would say, then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just know. Let's see if we can take care of you guys before you start getting too rowdy. Range attacks. That's gonna be annoying because they could hit all of my back characters now. Quick fire. Not bad. Both of them crits. Five damage. They hit fairly strong. Here is um, where Marie comes into play. Now, now that we're out of this tutorial, we could also talk about argument system. You're probably noticing the ARG bars under our HP. And some enemies focus on building up that meter alone. So suddenly, you have a healthy-bodied individual that doesn't want to listen to orders. And that's when they start also fleeing the guild, so... 
Right now, not too big of a deal, but I imagine once we get further into this um, area, you'll start seeing some enemies that focus on that altogether. Now, Marie, do we want heals or do we just want to see about doing a small little attack? We should be able to take care of this guy right now, as long as we don't miss. Beautiful. And then, let's see if we could split. Perfect. Not too bad with that one. Now, we took care of that goblin. You notice that we essentially avoided that. The maps are also situated in a way where you can avoid certain combat and take other routes if you think somebody has like a stronger party that might be efficient against your own squad. Here we have Thieflings, which you've already seen. Who are they with? Is that my actual goblin? Yes! Yes! Now, everybody there is in a row, so you know what that means. Boom, baby. And might as well just do a regular attack. And that would push her forward one spot, as you can see right there. Good rewards on that one. And let's see. Do we have an exit somewhere around here? I believe... Hmm. <clears throat> Missed it. I believe if you're quick enough with any sort of random wild animal you find out there, if you could actually capture them, you get more supplies for crafting down the line. I want to say maybe up is where we got to go. We do have a sturdy looking wolf man here, which I could not get around, unfortunately. Hmm, it's the other two dudes that we skipped out on earlier, so this could be a more tougher fight. Especially when you start off with both misses. That's very, very hurtful. Road banded. And shamans. Hmm. Don't really like what those guys could possibly do to us, so. Well, hopefully lowered some accuracy. It's not too bad. And that's bad. That is fairly bad. So bad, in fact, that I'm gonna do heal a large amount just for you. Because the rest of the party right now is fine. Oof. Okay, avoid shamans from now on, yes. Cleave through both of these two dudes, hopefully. Crits, at least on one. Oof. We're gonna need a heal here pretty soon. Um. Man. Tell you what. Oh, we can't get. We have to get through these two dudes before we go back there. Quick fire, please. Shamans. Oh, no! Oh, why would you do this to me? Well, we have our healer coming up before. I hope. Our thief goes down. Hopefully. We need to take care of this, at least one of them. Oh, thank god. Do not go after the thief. Thank you. Now we need a big heal. For you. Perfect. That's not too bad. We have a fairly tanky dude. Oof. Tanky dude with our dwarf up front. As a matter of fact, cleave again. Mm, come on, dog. I <laughs> need these guys out of the way already. Nice, thank you. Um, do you feel like not missing for one, or should we wait and get a heal off because my... Well, we can use a little group heal, I would say. Ah, whatever. Oh, it worked out because we missed one anyway. Now do we wait? Yes, just guard. And you do group heal. And next turn should be Dwarf Man coming up. Move forward, knock out, perfect. All right, Shamans are very scary. They hit very, very hard. We'll keep that in mind. Okay, if we keep heading south, there's apparently a couple of camps down here. But nothing we can interact with right now. So Grassland 2-2 is now where we've entered. Okay, so we have arrived here to apparently an event. Silas is here with this one. The water in this river looks so clear it could be glass. Rivers like this are usually pretty filtered of debris. Enjoy its refreshment while you can. Eh, yeah, just a heads up, we're being hunted. Wait, 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 are we stumbling to Jurassic Park or what? Okay, now this I wasn't expecting. <laughs> and again, what to expect with this game? Random events I've mentioned. Um, alright, this is interesting. I don't think this is the boss fight of the area. These guys might have a ton of HP too. That's a good way to start with a miss, sure. That's what you want to see. Quick fire, please. Two of them, and one dude. So they have a lot of HP. 
Oh, you see how they're going after? You see how they're raising my argument meter? These guys want me to essentially make my characters useless by not attacking per round now. Oh, this could be a problem. Okay, Dwarfman's coming up, so as long as nobody moves forward from that pack, we should do a cleave down that row. So we're gonna start healing argument now, you're saying? I kinda wanna do like a group heal and then start healing argument, so let me do a group heal first. We also have a couple of negative effects there. Okay, there we go. Should I put shield up in taunting shot before that so they just focus on Dwarf Boy? I kinda want to, but at the same time I can't miss out this chance to hit all of them. It's not bad. Or how about you just don't miss? Hmm? Could you do that for me? Okay, it's close. Look at them just going after my argument meter. Okay. Quick fire, yes. Well, at least one of them's out of the way. I'll take it. Okay, okay. Stacking those up, are we? Do we need heals now? No. Now I think we focus a little bit on healing argument. And let's start off with who's gonna hire. Start off with you. Perfect. Mm hmm. Trying to <laughs> trying to anger my my argument my anger healer. Leave again? Yes. Mm. I'm crazy about them misses. Now then, quick fire again. Yes. Come on. Come on. Okay. Okay. Oof. Oof. Dwarf boy is. We have one more dude coming up this turn before we could drop a heal on dwarf boy. So do I want to heal on myself with bracers? Ah, uh, not quite. Who's coming up? This guy. Really wanted to focus on this dude to knock him out already, but can't risk it. Only one. Oh, that was terrible. Not worth it. Leave again. Okay, crits all around. That's that's good. Oh, so you saw he drop. He technically should have died there. But as again, you you basically hit like your Saga Frontier or Nef Saga Frontier or Unlimited Saga. It's a saga. It's one of the game in the Saga series uses this as well, where you basically hit Death's Door and you have like one chance of like you know still healing or reviving that character before they're knocked out for good. So we absolutely have to do this one. Big heal. Okay. Now then. This has definitely been a step up. We need to take care of one of them at least. Just another one, please. Oh, <gasps> he survived with one. Get out of here. Oh, argument system getting so high. Okay. Quick fire, but it's random, Falcon. You gotta you gotta take care of one. You gotta take care of this one. Okay, thank you. Now. Argument's really high. We need to start de dealing with this now, don't we? Yes, um. I mean, start with the healer first of the argument. Lurking behind? Yeah, you would. Leave again. Okay. All right. Getting there. Getting there. Powder bag. Not gonna knock him out, but at least maybe an accuracy debuff. Spear thrust. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Knock him out. Thank you. Okay, now we're golden. So at this point, it's like, uh, do we want to farm it a little bit? Yes. Do... Focus on me, dog. And then we'll probably... I'm gonna basically milk it at this point, so give me a second while I do a little bit of a skip forward here. Two hours later. Now we're looking extra sexy here. End this fight. Alright. That wasn't as nearly as tough as the boss fight that I did in my own run, so I'm kind of curious about this one. Take a breather by the river crew. That was a close one. Does anyone know if the raptor meat is any good? Gamey? Is that the term? I have to imagine it's gamey. I try it. The party is healed. Oh, really? Did that take care of my... Yes, it did. I was farming all the... <laughs> I could have ended that fight so long ago. I'm going to do an edit for you guys, but I farmed so much waiting to just, just clear up my argument meter over and over. You know, again, darkest dungeon mentality, right? Oh, wow. There's actually... Well, I mean, the remains of people here. There seems to be that some... Oh... What in the world is this? Seems to be some sort of like failed expedition. The game won't move.
Interesting, there's bandits around and there's this dude, there's a bunch of bodies here too. Huh. I mean, I would imagine they're not alive. Seems to be some sort of scarecrow made of somebody's remains too. This is intriguing. I'm gonna make sure I'm not like locking myself into a trap here. Nothing there. Oh, treasure chest. That's probably goods or a key. Finally get back to camp. There's the key. Goblin Slayer. Goblin King. All right. Got to get rid of those ads first. Pulls in leftovers. He also has debuff me. I think he lowered my attack power with the dwarf. He's got a ton of HP. Well, let's get rid of the ads. I imagine he'll probably resummon ads if I had to wager a guess, but let's go in the mentality that he won't. So the faster that out of the way, the less targets for us to deal with. Um, yes, dual group heal. And you can see my argument meter with the uh, dwarf is going up quickly already. So we kind of see the strategy here being utilized by these dudes. Unfortunately, I can cleave a squad here. You know what? Just ration up. Get some mantra. Recover some ARG passively. Goblin King's got two attacks coming up, huh? Okay, let's see if we get our... Ah, damn it. Alright, so leave them alone. They're gonna be here the entire fight. Probably shouldn't do random fire in it from now on. Huh? King's Feast. Oh boy. Okay. Let's definitely do a taunting shot so we focus on attacking him, then we'll start putting up some shields on him and everything like that, so... Do... Do a group heal for now. I need to get those shields up, though. Shields up, please. Taking too much damage, he's gonna probably die on us here. Some herbs in there. And... Powder bag. Let's see about lowering that accuracy, hopefully. Okay, he is almost done, but luckily we have a heal coming up, so. Um, shield up. And then big, big, juicy heal right there. Okay. By the way, the argument meter is still high, we have to start focusing on that next. One damage is perfect. Damage is perfect. Okay, now. Spear thrust. Oh! This dude up front is the problem. So we have to quick fire. <gasps> no more goblin! Hey! Okay, we're almost there. Now, a bit of a heads up, my, my boss fight had like a second phase. I'm not sure if this is gonna have a second phase, I hope not. But um, it is something I had to deal with. Uh, yeah, shield up. Because you're still the focus. And then just do a group heal or argument heal. Eh, do a group heal. But we'll have to deal with the argument meter pretty soon as well. You know what? Just. Oh, I gotta move back for this though. Forward one. A spear thrust. Bag. I don't think an attack with us would finish that off. So. Instead, we'll just focus on Dwarf Argument Meter. That's fine. Low damage. Group. Annoying, but so be it. Finish it. Oh, come on. Spear. Okay. No second phase. 
One less false monarch, moving on. Rhyme me never to make Dahlgrim angry. <laughs> yeah, you and me both, kid. Oh! Oh, so that was my boss fight for this one then. So I guess that would have been close had we not deal with the Goblin King. Interesting. Well, at least got to the caravan. So that's going to be like the very first expedition that you take to set up the camp. And now from here, you start taking on quests, upgrading everything. Okay. Obviously, we're hoping that the same thing happened to the tutorial party. Doesn't happen to us, obviously, right? Now, let's see. Since the climate within the Untamed Wilds is largely unknown, several members of the caravan would like to focus on preserving food against a variety of climates. Should the guild leader support taking the time and cause for preservation or continue to rely on hunters and gatherers? I'm gonna go hunters and gatherers. That's uh, two of my main team damage members right there. And this is where I meant where, now that we have the non-tutorial caravan, here we have an area for Dogrim to level himself up. This, you could actually trade goods for any stuff that you might need. So, for instance, you might want to trade ore for weed or herbs or wood, etc., etc., depending on what you may be having an excess amount of or something you're probably lacking for a crucial upgrade. And then this is to scout our next area going forward. You could also re-scout if you feel like checking out the Tangled Woods and the Overgrown Ash. So, again, this will be like different type of biomes. But we're technically out of time here with this one, so I think, um, let's choose that one, see if it changes. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Can I go back? No. So now I've married to this area right here without doing enough upgrades, so that's fine. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. This has been Sanctuary Saga. As I've mentioned, very intriguing. The combat is definitely what pulls me to this one. Everything else about it is kind of like, you know, there. But it's definitely one of those games where if you like to just strategize things and, like, you know, properly min-max, um attack styles and also synergies so that your people don't get upset with each other and leave the guild definitely want to check out down below in the description i'll have a link for you as i've mentioned there's gonna be a launch day discount for both the base edition and the deluxe hopefully you guys enjoyed it i'll catch you next time